Hey guys, I am coming to you live from my kitchen. I uh, was getting ready to make some risotto and I thought I'd show you. Um, it's one of my favorite recipes. It's pretty um, easy to modify. Um, it's a broccoli, bro cheddar broccoli risotto with chicken. I'm not using broccoli and I'm not using chicken, so <laughs> you can really kind of mix it up. But what I love about risotto is it's real creamy if you're not familiar with it. It's a type of rice, so here's the bag. It's called Arborio rice. It probably looks backward, but um, um, I like it. But what I really like about this recipe is if you normally make risotto on the cooktop, you're left standing there for about 40 minutes stirring while you add half a cup of broth for 40 minutes. So it's a really time consuming recipe, uh, but this makes it super quick. Um, this is our quick cooker. It's an electric pressure cooker and it, um, it has some really nice features. It has some handles here so it's easy to pick up and move around. And just to show you before I get it started, um, it has the pressure release here and it's quite a distance away from the button where you press down. So, and then it has a red, you can see it, um, pressure release. So when it comes up and you can see it's level like that, it means it's under pressure and when it's down, the pressure's released. So that kind of gives you an idea of what to look for. Um, and then it's plugged in. I'm not sure if you can see the front of it is lit up. There are 16 different functions on the front for pork, chicken. Um, you can proof bread in here. Uh, you can make yogurt in here. There's all kinds of things you can do, but it also functions as a slow cooker, which I think is just genius. So um, if you don't have a lot of room in your kitchen, it's a great way to um, have something compact and uh, you know, multi-purpose. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. I need to preheat it for four minutes. So I'm gonna put it on sear and press start. So it's gonna go ahead and start preheating while I chop the onion and the pepper that we're gonna saute. Uh, so I need a medium onion, a medium pepper, some garlic, and some oil. So I don't think I put the oil in. I know it says heat the oil. So I'm gonna put um, two tablespoons of oil. And I'm going to use our uh, measuring cup set. You can see it's kind of all stuck together, so they nest together for easy storage and you're not losing them. So I'm going to put two tablespoons in. And you can use less. If you don't want to use a lot of oil, you can actually put water in the bottom and just every so often just put another tablespoon or two. And what that does is it just keeps it from sticking and burning um, without the oil. So the next thing I need to do is go ahead and I'll cut up my onion and um, I have a pretty big onion so I'm only going to use half of it. And then I'm going to cut the base, the roots off and then cut through and then I'm just going to set half of it aside. I already had some saran wrap out. And then I'm just going to peel the outside portion off. And then if you're not familiar, our food chopper is one of our most popular products. Um, I had a woman the other day ask me if we had um, a replacement collar for it, and we do carry it, but hers was 20 years old. So they last. Let me tell you, they last. So this is our newest food chopper. Um, it does have a base that you can, um, you can actually chop in that but it has a um, collar, and like I said, it's replaceable if you have one from um, you know within a few recent years. And then it actually opens up, so you can just stick it in the uh, dishwasher and it's easy cleanup. Uh, but I'm just gonna put it back together and show you how easy it is. Uh, my husband really likes this for cutting up onions because um, you know you're, it's all kind of contained underneath here, and so it doesn't burn your eyes as bad as when you cut it by hand. And I'm cutting on our flexible cutting mat, and I'll show you why I like that in a minute. So I'm just cutting it into chunks. And then what I'm gonna do is put it, um, it's on this cutting mat, let me lift it up so you can see. So what I like to do is I've got, you know, several pieces spread out, and I just kind of get a little grouping underneath it. And I'll chop, and then what I do is I kind of swirl it, and it mixes any big chunks that haven't gotten chopped in, and so you can just, it a couple more times and then, and then grab another little section of them 
And that's all there is to it. So really quickly, you can chop a whole onion. And what I really like it for is carrots. I have a meatloaf recipe that calls for chopped carrots and to do them by hand is so tedious. So I like to do it um, with this and it's just super quick. So my oil is heating up. I'm gonna go ahead and put my onions in and get them started. And then I'll add my pepper as I'm done cutting it. Give that a little stir. Now this is our teak spoon. I bet many of you got that last month. Uh, it was our gift with purchase. And I just wanted to kind of give you a tip if you did get that. Uh, every once in a while, um, you will want to condition it with a little bit of oil. Um, you can either get food grade mineral oil or I just used some um, canola oil and just rubbed it on it after I washed it and that's all I did. And it just kind of keeps it from drying out because it is teak. Now if you had the bamboo ones, they didn't, you didn't have to do that, but I really like the spoon. I'll show it to you in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and do the peppers just like I did the onion. And it's already getting brown. And this is nice because it has a sear piece. you can chop that all up and then I'll just go ahead and pull this up and yeah I can pull it up and fold it which is what's nice about it I have to tell you a funny story though one day I was um, doing that I was transferring some onion got a notification here I'm going to turn off I was transferring some onion to a pan and I lifted it up and I wasn't real careful how I was holding it and it like let go and it like boomeranged across my kitchen. So make sure you hold it firm. But that's the only time in like quite a few, you know, 15 years that I've had that happen, but I wasn't being careful. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that finish. And then let me just check my recipe. I need some garlic. So I'm gonna grab some garlic cloves. Now this is a um, garlic bulb. It's kind of small because I've been using garlic off of it but when it calls for a clove it's just one little one it can kind of be confusing if you've never used fresh garlic so let me grab my garlic press so I'm gonna go ahead and I don't have to peel it which is what's really nice so I'm just gonna go ahead and take it and stick it in there and squeeze it right in and then I'm gonna use the little brush that comes with it to scrape it off and put the peel in my little trash bin. So I'll just keep doing that. Now I'm using three because two of them are kind of small. So if you like to make risotto, let us know, comment below, and let us know what kind you like to make. Um, I've made Parmesan, um, I've made the broccoli cheddar, I've made um, plain, I mean, I've made a lot. I make it often. And I made it, the first time I made it with a quick cooker, my husband was like, I really like risotto. Why don't we have it more often? And I said, because I used to have to stand there for 40 minutes and stir, and I don't have time to do that very often. So this is really nice, because I can just get it all in, press it to start, and in, uh, it takes four minutes to cook. Um, and it does have a preheating period, just like you would if you were cooking in an oven. So um, it does take a few minutes to come up to pressure. All right, so that's about done. So half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna grab some salt. And I always like to measure salt over something other than what I'm gonna put it in. So if it's any extra, it goes in my, my waste and not in my dish and over salt. So that's a little tip. All right, 
right, so I'm going to go ahead and add my rice. So I've got my Easy Read measuring cup. And what's nice is you can actually read this. It's for liquids, but you can read it from standing up instead of like, you know, years ago with the Pyrex ones, you had to get down on the level and check it. So you don't have to do that with these. Uh, but I do like to use this to measure rice because if you try to measure rice in a regular um, measuring cup for um, dry goods, you know, it spills all over and you are forever picking up grains of rice. So I'm going to drop that in. And what I like about the spoon, let me show it to you, is it's kind of angled and it's, you know, you can see it's concave, it's a spoon, but it also scrapes. And that little point gets in the edge of um, dishes, like if you're stirring and you have a straight-sided um, pan, it really gets in the corners. It's probably my most used spoon that I have since I got that. So now, if you were doing chicken, you would put it in, chop it up into pieces. Um, they call, it calls for a pound of chicken tenderloins. Um, but like I said, I'm not using that. And so I'm now I'm gonna put in my uh, chicken broth. I actually have water here because I am using, not chicken broth, I'm using, it's called, it's a broth base. It's from Orrington Farms. Let me show it to you so if you can see that. And I order it off um, Amazon. Uh, I've not found it in a store near me. I'm in, uh, outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, so. Um, you know, we have some pretty decent stores, but I've not found it here, so I just ordered off of Amazon, and um, I've not had, um, I, I'm actually almost done with this one. So now uh, I need to put in six teaspoons. I could have done two tablespoons, but my tablespoon is dirty, and I don't want to stick it in here. Okay, so I've got that done. And this actually, this is a um, vegan base but it, um, it says chicken flavored. So if you um, don't like to eat meat or you just want an alternative, um, that's a great choice. That was actually recommended by Cook's Illustrated if you're familiar with them. Uh, they do America's Test Kitchen on PBS and they've got some fabulous cookbooks um, uh, called America's Test Kitchen. Uh, they also do Cook's Country if you're familiar. It's the same company. Um, always fantastic recipes. So when they recommend something, I usually go with it. So. Uh, let's see, I need a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And I will tell you, if you're making this, do not omit this. It really does make a huge difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a tablespoon in. And that's all that goes in at this point. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll show you, I'm gonna put the lid on, but I wanna show you something important. It does have a little steam symbol. I'm not sure if I can get it to show up right here. It matches on here, you can see it right there. Those have to be in the same direction, okay? So if you're doing it and it's this direction, you can see that, yeah, there you go. See it sideways? It is not gonna build pressure. It has to be lined up the same direction and this actually comes out, so it fits in there. And um, this has to be flush, because when you press it to release, you can see it is, it's kind of hard to get it to show up. It's recessed, there you go. You can see it's recessed, and then to get it to come back out, you just press it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on, put my lid on. It sounds like R2-D2. And then I'm going to put it on, I believe, rice for four minutes. Let me check. Yep, white rice and press start. So I'm gonna go ahead and you just use this dial right here if you can see. Um, let me move it. And it stays cool. I mean, it's been on and it's not hot, so that's another nice feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and press cancel over here because it was on sear. And I'm gonna turn it now until it goes um, to the rice. But I'm gonna tell you, as I go by what all the different features are, because I told you there's 16 so that you know what there are. So there's a sear feature, uh, steam, slow cooker, proof. So if you want to proof bread, you can proof it in here. Uh, chicken and poultry, beef, pork, fish, seafood, soup and stock, white rice, brown rice, whole grains, beans, stew or chili, and dessert. Okay, so that's white rice. 
and it shows up four, and I'm gonna press start right here. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna have this little light that trails around in a rectangular pattern, and that tells you that it's building steam. And then what will happen next is when it builds up that pressure, this little red button I showed you is gonna pop up and it'll be flush with the lid. And you can actually see it from across the room so it's nice when you're cooking and you know, you're trying to do stuff around the house, you can actually see that it's built pressure and it's working. Um, and it will, um, it'll show up with the number four and it's four minutes, that's the white rice setting. And it actually counts backward, so it'll count down. And then when it's finished, it goes into a warming feature. And when it's done with that, it, or when it's done with the cooking feature, it goes into the warming feature and it counts up. So if it says seven, you'll know it's been warming for seven minutes. So it just holds it and keeps it warm. And it also has a delay feature. So if you want to um, maybe put some steel cut oats in here and have it ready for breakfast, you can have it turn on um, you know, before you get up and when you get up, it's all ready to go. Um, you can you know, have everything in here and for chili or something and then um, have it go off and be ready when you come home from work. So um, those are some really nice features that this has. Um, and of course, we have all kind of recipes that are designed to be um, used in here. So they're tried and true, tested. Um, you know, it's not something you're gonna get off the internet and wonder, is it gonna turn out? <laughs> I had that happen yesterday. I made some uh, broccoli chicken wings, which sounds really strange, but you batter broccoli and then coat it with um, hot sauce, and it does taste like a chicken wing. But um, it, they did not turn out like the picture said they would. So it's always a little disappointing when it's not quite what you think it's gonna be. So our recipes are tried and true. It comes with a quick cooker guide full of recipes. Um, it has a whole section at the front on um, how to cook dried beans, how to hard boil eggs. I've just, people have been raving about that. So I'm gonna try that tomorrow. Um, simple salsa chicken. And then it has uh, pages on beans and legumes and grains and rice directions. Then it has a section on how to cook all kind of different vegetables, uh, times, how to prep them to put them in there. And then meat and poultry. So it's just chock full of information. Um, and anybody who purchases it obviously can contact me. I'm gonna help you if you have any issues, you need to know how to work it. Um, I'm gonna be doing a quick cooker workshop online um, week after next. So if you're interested in that, comment below and I'll get you that information so that you can take part in that. So, and if you have another brand of pressure cooker, you're welcome to take part in that as well. So anyway, I hope this has been useful. Now when this is done, what I'm gonna do is take the lid off, let the pressure, or let the pressure off, um, and it'll do a quick release. So I'll press this, it'll steam up really um, high. So you don't wanna put this like underneath a counter you want it open somewhere where it's gonna steam and not um, you know, hurt anything. Um, and then I'm just gonna mix in some frozen peas and about a cup of, um, I'm not gonna use cheddar, I have Monterey Jack on hand, so I'm just gonna use that. And um, that's it, I mean, and you just put the lid back on and then you know, just a minute or two, those peas are defrosted and they're bright green and it just looks so pretty. So it's a great one for like company to have with a salad and some rolls or something like that. So anyway, I hope this has given you some ideas. There's just a lot of variations you can do on risotto and being able to walk away and not have to stand at the stove is just awesome. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great um, evening and I'll see you later, bye. My broccoli, um, cheddar broccoli risotto is done and I wanted to show you just real quick how to finish it up. Let me grab my peas. So I mentioned before that I'm making bread or <laughs> broccoli cheddar risotto, but I'm not using broccoli and I'm not using cheddar. So um, it's very versatile. I've even used corn instead. So I wanted to show you, so my time is up and I mentioned to you, let me turn this a little bit. So I mentioned to you that it would start counting up. So it's been warming for three minutes because I was supposed to release the pressure uh, but I was setting my camera up. So I'm gonna go ahead and release it so you can see what it looks like. So I push the button and it's just coming out and it's just steam, that can hurt you. I know my mom had the old pressure cooker and you know she was always terrified it was gonna, um, God knows what was gonna happen, but she, she was scared of it. Um, so this is really safe.
and it just takes a minute. And then you'll watch this little red button will pop down and you'll know that the pressure's released. And you can't get the lid off while that's up, so no worries that you're gonna take it off and it's gonna be too soon. So what I did in the meantime while we're waiting for that is I measured two cups of peas and they're frozen and I rinsed them under water because they were like, they probably made them up freezer too long and they had like little chunks of ice on them and I thought it was gonna be too much water to put in there. Um, so I put them in our easy read measuring colander and what I like is it actually just fits over the divider in your sink so you can just rinse it and let it hang there and drain. Um, and then I just put it in here just to bring it over. And then I've got a cup of grated um, cheddar um, Monterey Jack. So I'm gonna use that. So it really lends itself to, because it's rice, you know rice is pretty plain. You can do lots of different flavors. So you can see that the red button dropped down. So I'm gonna go ahead and it releases, so real easy. I'll just let that drain a minute. And then, um, I can't really, let me, hope I don't make y'all sick, but I'm gonna kind of show you just so you can see what it looks like. So you can see it's really creamy. Now, if you were doing the broccoli cheddar version, um, I would recommend cutting your broccoli um, small and um, you're gonna put it in here and then you actually um, put the lid back on. Um, I think, it, no, actually, you. I'm sorry. You put it on, it's been a while since I've made it with, with, um, with broccoli, but you put it on and you put it on sear again and you let it cook that way. Um, and that way it, you know, your broccoli's steamed, so it's cooked. So you can see, and it's so beautiful when you use peas. And then as it, as it sits, it will thicken a little bit, but you can see that it's like really creamy. And it's pretty with the green and red. Boy, that'd be a good holiday. Holiday one. I hate waste, sorry about that. So I'll just go ahead and stir that in. And it is just delicious. I would highly recommend it. Okay, so you can see it's just creamy. And that cheese will go ahead and continue to melt. So let me carefully set you back down. <laughs> so you don't get sick. Alrighty, so uh, like I said, I hope this kind of gives you an idea of um, when you use an electric pressure cooker, um, how um, easy and quick it makes getting dinner on the table. Um, and I don't know about you, but growing up, some of my best memories are when the, time, the times that we sat around the table and you know, we'd sit there long after dinner was over telling stories about the day or joking around and um, you know, eventually that time ended, you know, when we were all going our separate ways, you know, some of us worked or had activities after school, but that time is, you know, precious and uh, being able to, you know, get a, get a meal on the table fast is just priceless. So, especially after a long day. So anyway, I hope this gives you ideas uh, for dinner and how to mix this up and do different variations for it uh, so that you can make it for your family. You guys have a great night. Bye.